Hi, I'm Cy Pavey. This is uh, Break Magazine, and we're here for Mini Tip Monday. So th this week, uh, again, last of the Dakar-focused Mini Tip Mondays, we're going to have a look at uh, what a Dakar rider wears. There's some great crossovers between Dakar and adventure riding, for sure, and we can learn a lot, of, a lot about uh, what's useful to wear, actually in both environments. There's a, a little bit to be learned from, from each world. So uh, just to start with, typical how a Dakar rider starts out in the morning in his underpants. We've got some base layers. Base layers serve a couple of purposes. Nice, uh, nice little extra layer against your skin, stops the chafing. And uh, in this case, especially these days, you'll see it's de rigueur for everyone, all the top riders wearing this these days, evade base layer. It's a real nice base layer, but it's also got the ability to um, turn on the battery and heat you up. We have to deal with a lot of conditions in one day on Dakar. Uh, the last time we went, we had minus nine and 47 on the one day. So real uh, sort of extreme of conditions that you have to deal with. So the next, the next layer, uh, just to quickly talk about knee protection. So we start off, first thing that goes on after the base layers, knee protection. Most of the riders these days tend to wear an actual brace like this rather than just a hard plastic cover. Uh, it still gives you all the actual protection from impact, but it gives us some rigidity in the knee, stops any lateral mov movement, stops us overextending the knee. So if you do kind of put your foot out to catch yourself or save yourself, which happens a lot when we ride big heavy bikes, it reduces the risk of uh, tearing a ligament in the knee. And that's kind of it for the bottom half. Then we go for some nice lightweight motocross type trousers. And again, where we like to wear these over adventure trousers is they're very small, lightweight, flexible, allows us to be able to move on the bike, gives us a lot more freedom of movement. As I say, lightweight, easy to, uh, easy to get that nice little lunge in there. So where did that come from? And then, uh, and then of course, we go to uh, the footwear. We're going to wear... Go on. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Catch your foot in a passing stick or a rock, you've got plenty of strength. High protection. High protection. Also, you'll see a lot of riders Sounds really crazy, but a lot of riders like wearing a white boot, light colored boots. It can be super hot in the desert, and when your feet get hot, it's actually horrible. It's a small little thing, but I've tried it the wrong way around wearing black boots, and it really sucks. So then we're not gonna bother with the other brace. I'll put that foot on so that I don't fall over. Next, we're gonna start to look at some uh, upper body protection. Let's say we've got the base layer on. This is kind of the, the suit I've got on. It's quite typical. A lot of Dakar riders like wearing this. Full protection, shoulders, elbows. Uh, it's a very personal thing. There's also many riders, myself included, that just like to wear a very simple chest and back protector. Again, you're looking for lightweight, easy to move around in. You don't want that to feel heavy. You've got enough hard work to do without carrying around like we typically adventure kind of riding jackets and armor are very heavy. When you've got to carry that around all day, it just makes the job that little bit harder. So we're looking for lightweight, flexible, easy to move, comfortable kit. And then, uh, and then as I say, we've got to deal with the sort of all conditions. So a lot of the time it's super hot, especially when you're racing, but also in the mornings we can have quite, uh, mornings and the evenings, we can have quite cold conditions. So we need that flexibility that layers give us that's where the evade base layer comes in, fantastic. It works as a normal base layer when the weather's hot. When it's cold, we can get a bit of electricity in there, runs off a small battery. Um, we've also found these kind of just typical outdoor thing. Uh, you're, uh, I don't know what you call this, this is a crag hoppers one, but it's sort of like sleeping bag kind of thing. It can pack down super small. You can get that into the pocket of your jacket so it's not bothering you all day. And then when it's cold, at the beginning and the end of the day, you can slip her on. It's warmer than a normal fleece. And even, you can even get that on under your helmet. Super cozy, very nice. We'll get rid of that for the moment. As I say, uh, similarly, a lot of the time when, it's, when we know it's not that extreme, instead of that, we will carry this, which is just a windproof uh, chest, kind of, what do you call that? Gilet, windproof gilet. Uh, works fantastic and in fact when I'm riding my adventure bike most of the time 
That's what I've got on as a sort of mid layer, just keeps the wind off your chest and around your neck. Makes a big difference. And then this, this is our rally jacket. Um, again, you can see it, it's a jacket, but it's very lightweight, very soft, small, super vented. You can literally blow air through it. It's not much more than wearing a motocross shirt. Very nice and lightweight. We've got a uh, three litre bladder in the back for drinking water. And again, whether I'm racing or just travel riding, just having water that you can sip away on all day. You've got the mouthpiece right there. Makes a huge difference to your fatigue levels at the end of the day. And then, uh, so that goes on next. Nice layer, as I say, super lightweight, super flexible. I can still move around on the bike, ride actively. Do that up. We need lots of pockets in our jacket. We've got to carry like you would when you're travel riding. You've got to carry your wallet, your passport. That's on an inside pocket. Kind of got pockets here. You can have a spare pair of gloves, got earplugs, painkillers for when you do inevitably have a little tumble. And most importantly in this pocket, we always have the toilet roll. You never know. So that's kind of it really. Um, then when it's cold or wet, just literally got in the back pocket there. Gonna make this look really uncoordinated, but the last stacker I had this down where I could do this while I was riding. Waterproof base, again, nice and small, lightweight, jams into a pocket really easy, but you get that windproof, waterproof layer on the outside. And with that, with that lot, I won't say I wasn't cold, but we dealt with minus nine, 300 kilometers riding at minus nine in the early hours of the morning with just that lot. <laughs> Job done. Uh, lastly, most importantly, of course, we've got helmet, goggles, gloves. We like to use your motocross type lightweight gloves. So you've got good, con good use of the controls. You can feel the throttle and brakes and clutch. And it, when it's hot, they're fantastic. Of course, when it's cold, you need to do something to extra for your hands. Uh, everyone's got a little bit of a different system for that. For us, we made sure we've had heated grips even on our race bikes lightweight gloves and gone with the old uh, hand covers. Don't know what's happened to them. But uh, yeah, kept our hands warm by get, keeping the wind off them. And then, uh, of course, we need your off-road type helmet. Um, the difference with an off-road helmet compared to a road helmet or even an adventure helmet is you've got plenty of room to breathe here. The mouthpiece tends to be a bit further away. Got big uh, airflow in the front, so when you're breathing hard, working hard, you can still breathe. Big wide eye port for extra good visibility. Uh, so we tend to wear, wear helmet and goggles rather than your, your visor. So that goes on, do the helmet up. And then, uh, of course, the goggles. We'll take that off again. There's one thing that we did bring the other way from Adventure Bike World. The last time we did Dakar, I see a lot of guys still using helmet and goggles for sure, and we did throughout all the racing, but when it was really cold on the liaisons, with this helmet, with the BM helmet, we were able to put the visor back on and the, the kind of plug the vents up at the front. Made a big difference when it was really cold for sure. Nice to, nice to drive like that. Um, goggles, most people are at least carrying two lenses. Uh, some of us actually like to have two complete sets of goggles. The, with the goggles, we've got uh, a Gore-Tex liner in here for the high speed stuff. Doesn't ventilate so well, but it's great. Stops wind swirl, swirl around your eyes. And uh, with that one, we tend to run a tinted lens because you're usually using that in the height of the sun and the daylight. If you look at all the, the fastest guys in the world, they've got a gold tint. We're not so fast. We have to go with a more subtle tint. Got to be, got to be fast to wear gold. And then uh, you need a clear lens for when you're in the evening or if it's raining. And with that goggle, we tend to use a sort of t traditional motocross goggle with the foam in it that, that doesn't fog up so much. So I, th I think, you know, the stuff that I like to learn from that from uh, for when I go back onto my adventure bike world is I definitely still, uh, I definitely still, especially on the lower half of my body, want to wear the same level of protection because again, we're riding big heavy bikes. It's very easy without even having, without talking about crashing just to you know, put your foot out in some slippery ground and easily damage your knee or ankle without, without falling over. So that's super important for me, even when I go back on the adventure bike. Um, like, like with all outdoor activities, the layering thing is really, really important. You know, the Vade layer is fantastic. The, um, the sort of mid layer works really, really well because you, know, you can ride your adventure bike in really with just a, a sort of base layer and that, that kind of extra mid layer you can definitely deal with 
anything from uh, sort of zero to 20 quite comfortably. Um, and, and having the kind of windproof, waterproof outer layer, even with a really, really good um, rally suit these days, that sort of extra layer, I think, is, makes a big difference for me. Um, yeah, and, and the same, even with the helmet and goggles, like I really like riding with the, the visor on, on the adventure bike. It's a very uh, relaxed way, it's quiet and so on. But when you get into off-road terrain, you, you've definitely got clearer vision when you've got the lens close to your eyes like you do with goggles. So if I'm gonna go uh, and do some more difficult or difficult for my level riding on the adventure bike, I, I always like to have a pair of goggles with me even if I'm riding with a visor for the road and you know for the convenience, I'll always have those with me. And for me personally, I, I really, really think the one of the most important things is, is the lightweight thin gloves. It's really hard to control a big bike with big fat gloves and I'd rather have these and here grips and some protection over my hands rather than go onto your road type uh, your road type glove. I think it's good to adapt. You know, it takes a little while if you've only ridden on the road with big gloves, it takes a little while to adapt to that. But for me, that's one of the most important things. It's having dexterity. Okay, so if you like what you've seen, don't forget to su subscribe, like us on Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff, and we'll see you on the trail.